HP Spectre X360 versus the Razor Blade 15 base. Which one is right for you? Which one should you choose? Let's take a look. Yo, what up YouTube? Crash Wilcox and just got maybe a slight little comparison video here between two recent laptops that I bought and I just thought that they were close enough in, I guess, specs that it warranted a comparison, but they are far enough, there's a big enough difference to warrant pointing out who I think should buy each one. So that's sort of the reason why we went this route. So first off, just going to I'm not going to do a deep dive benchmark breakdown. There are videos on both of these laptops on the channel, so you can go check them out. I'll have them here. I'll have them linked at the end of the video. So you can go check those out and if you're interested in either one to kind of get a a deeper look at them. This video is not intended to be terribly long, just kind of a quick look through and kind of make that decision. So the again, the reason why I kind of wanted to go with this video is I paid roughly $2,000 for each of these laptops and they each serve a different purpose so I just wanted to sort of highlight that if you're in the market for a laptop. So they're both 4K OLED panels on these screens. And they're both, I think, right on that crust of like super premium laptops. I mean, you can definitely go, you know, maybe a Razer Blade 15 Advanced is obviously going to be a little higher in the quality maybe than this one, uh, you know. Debatable, I guess, depending on what features you want. And really, you know, you can't really get much higher quality, at least not in the HP lineup. But, you know, you could maybe get, go with the XPS or maybe a MacBook type thing in that, this realm of what this laptop does. So, what these things sort of have in common here. So, I think they both have, obviously, the screens are both, like I mentioned, 4K OLED. And they're both beautiful screens. I don't know, they're, yeah, they're popping up here. So let me try to log these things in real quick so we can see them. Yeah, so both of the screens are 4K OLED. The screen on the Razer Blade, I believe goes up to 600 nits. And on the Spectre, I think it tops out around 400 nits. So both are very nice looking, um, though this one does get a little bit brighter, a little more vibrant. Um, both of them have, I think, a pretty nice port selection. So on the Spectre, you're gonna get your two th uh, USB-C, one Thunderbolt 3. You're getting your USB type A, plus a micro SD card slot on here, which is nice. You get a full size HDMI, you know, and then on here, you're getting as well, two USB-C, three USB-A, full size HDMI. Um, and then they both come with an i7-10750H processor so they have the exact same processor both have incredibly nice build quality both are solid there's you know neither of them are plastic they're both solid metal construction on here both feel incredibly firm you know there's no flimsiness to them both of them are incredibly well made so look and feel they both are very premium in that area. So, uh, but I think that's sort of kind of where they're similar. I think the differences stand out more to me. So the HP Spectre, it is a convertible laptop. So it's two in one, 
you know, it's got the tablet mode. Obviously, you can rotate it 360. And this comes with a touch screen, 4K screen. And it also, it comes with the stylus as well. This, obviously not a convertible and not touch screen. <clears throat> so you lose that feature. The Spectre comes with a 1650 Ti, whereas the Razor Blade comes with a 2070 Max-Q. So you can game on both. The 1650 Ti is a respectable GPU. I mean, you can do some pretty good gaming on this. You know, not to the level of the, the Razer, but still, you can still game very nice on this laptop. Um, so I've kind of debated on how to make this video. So I don't really, you know, there's a lot of differences, a lot of similarities, but really I just wanted to, I guess maybe just talk about who I think each one of these is for. So, you know, the HP Spectre, I think Okay, so the Razer 15, this was sort of bought as a desktop replacement, and I think it does that fantastically. I do not think I would consider the Spectre a desktop replacement, though it is an incredibly capable laptop. I think it has a nice port selection, but it is still, I think, a little limited compared to the, the Razer Blade. This has a more robust... Um, port selection, which I think would make it better as a desktop replacement. The GPU in the Spectre, while it's great GPU, 1650 Ti, it's not quite as powerful as what I would personally, personally want in a desktop replacement. The 2070 Max-Q, on the other hand, I think is a wonderful GPU for a desktop replacement. Um, if you're gaming, like I mentioned, you can game respectably on the Spectre, but you could actually do some 4K gaming like legitimately on this 2070 Max Q. And there's really not a game today that this thing can't handle, you know, running at least 1080p high detail, all that. It'll handle anything that you're going to throw at it. Whereas the 1650 Ti, when you start getting the more AAA titles, it can get a little bit difficult for it. Um, so that's a big difference here. So if you're looking for maybe a desktop replacement type laptop, I would steer you more towards the Razer. If you don't need a desktop replacement and you are just looking for maybe something to use the few times, you know, a month or a year when you're going to be on the road and you want something that's capable of doing maybe some content creation for you, gaming adequately while you're on the road for a little bit but more of just a you know surf the web answer some emails maybe type up some reports create some you know documents whatever it happens to be where you're not doing like heavy heavy content creation then i think this makes more sense and this is what i would lean towards so one of the biggest differences between these laptops that I've noticed that is like apparent as soon as you use it, the keyboard on the Spectre is leagues better than the Razer. Typing on this is enjoyable. Like it's noticeably better than the Razer. So, I think if you're somebody who maybe does a lot of a lot of typing, a lot of writing on your laptop, I you know, and more so than maybe content creation or maybe more so than gaming, you you're maybe a heavy writer, definitely this would be something I would recommend for you over the blade. I'm sure there's people out there who like this specific keyboard, but I think in general just the way that this one feels, the keys, the layout of the keys. Again, I'm not a world-class 
Typer, but this thing is night and day better than the Razer. Um, also, if you're maybe into that graphic design, like I mentioned, this is a touch screen. So if you are into that, you can pull the stylus out, you can draw, you can do your graphic design on here and it works really well. Also, if you are the type of person that may, like I mentioned, you're not using this as a desktop replacement, but you want something that just <laughs> doesn't look like anything else. This is the most beautiful laptop I've ever seen. It's that gem cut design. It's going to be unlike anything else that you're going to see <laughs> wherever you go. Now, the Razer looks wonderful. It's a very nice looking laptop, very well built laptop, but it doesn't catch you off guard when you look at it like the Spectre does. As far as look and feel of the laptop, I don't think you can do it better than Spectre. Razer is fantastic, nothing wrong with it, but it is not even close in the look and feel of the laptop. So that would be sort of who I would say these two laptops would be for. If you're looking for a desktop replacement and you care more about gaming, then go for this. Also, the other big reason is this is upgradable largely, and this really isn't. So one M.2 slot, 16 gigabytes of RAM is soldered in, so you can't upgrade the RAM. This has two M.2 slots and upgradable to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So definitely a desktop replacement type laptop, not a desktop replacement. But this is an everyday, excellent user experience laptop. So if that's something you're interested in, like I mentioned, writing, graphic design, or just everyday use, you're on the road, you wanna pull something out to surf the web, that sort of thing, this is going to be much more enjoyable experience, in my opinion, than the Razer would be. And then maybe the last thing, sort of a critique, I would say. So this Spectre comes with the Bang & Olufsen speakers, is what they say. And this just comes with, I guess, Razer's generic speakers. And the Razer speakers are better than the HP speakers. I think if they wouldn't have named these, I would have had no issue with them. But because they decided to name the speakers, it's noticeable how unnoticeable they are, I think. Whereas the Spectre one, or the, the Razer speakers, they just sound good. They get loud. And I frankly think they're better. So I don't know why they went with the whole Bang & Olufsen I mean, it sounds cool, and if you're looking at them at the store and you're like, oh, this one's got cool named speakers and these don't, you wouldn't know that these are just better. Personally, that's what I think. Um, so that's just like a simple little critique there on that. And then also, you know, if this is something that may interest some of you, it doesn't really matter a ton to me, but this has... Windows Hello facial recognition as well as fingerprint recognition or a fingerprint scanner. So it does have those little additional features that the Razer doesn't have. So I personally, I've reviewed that in the Spectre video. Fingerprint scanner is very nice. And it also comes with nice little f security features of like a win... Uh, camera kill switch and those sorts of things. So just to finally, you know, close, I know I've kind of been all over the place here. I didn't know how I wanted to review these, but this is just a much nicer computer for a pickup, throw in your book bag. You're going to run to Starbucks, grab a coffee, knock out some homework and that sort of stuff. Much nicer, I think personally for those type of tasks. And this is much nicer for what I use it for. It's gonna be largely sitting in my house on a desk, connected to an external monitor, and I'm gonna be doing video editing, I'm gonna be doing audio editing, 
that sort of stuff. And then occasionally write, you can obviously tell I'm not writing a script or I wouldn't be bumbling through this the way I am. But not a, a lot of heavy typing and you know, I may occasionally grab it and hit the road, but largely I'm it's going to be sitting on its, you know, on its dock and not moving and I do like the game obviously. Um so that's important to me as well whereas I don't think gaming should be super high up on the list for you with this. But there is crossover here. They're both very capable laptops. If you got into a time in your life and you're video editing, this is going to work. The 1650 Ti is strong. The, the CPU is strong. It will certainly work well. It's just not to the level of the Razer. And likewise, if you are into you know, typing, going to school, that sort of thing, Certainly more than capable, just not as comfortable as the Spectre. And then again, some more crossover there. They're both beautiful. It's just, there's nothing like this. You'll see stuff in this vein, like the Razer. You ain't seeing anything like the Spectre. So overall, they're both A-plus laptops in my book. They're wonderful. They're both cream of the crop in their areas, but... They do have, I think, very specific use cases. So that's my bumbling, rambling comparison video there. Uh, if you found it useful at all, please take a second to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would certainly appreciate it. And uh, if you have any comments, anything you found that you like, maybe if you own these laptops between the two, please throw those down in the comments. I'm sure people that are interested would love to read that kind of get some other insight. It would help them make a sound decision. But with that being said, I got nothing else for you guys. God bless.